I want you to take a trip with me. Let's take a ride, um, a ride on perspective, on this God perspective train. Um, as you know, you know, you always hear me talking about identity, um, trying to understand it and trying to uh, give the perspective of who we really are and the power in knowing it and, and accepting it and walking with God in it. It's so important. It's so important. So um, I just got a couple of things to say. I won't be too long. But I just wanted to um, kind of offer this, this perspective. I was listening to something earlier, and it really triggered an imagination. Actually, I know it was God. It triggered God in this way, and it was. And this is kind of it's kind of scary to say, but it's not. It's not really for me. But I know sometimes we hear things that we we're not used to hearing, and then we start to judge it. Um, I'll say unrighteously because we don't allow the Spirit of God to help us get understanding in the things that we uh, get wind of. So I was thinking about that what I what I heard got me to thinking about Jesus. So I've heard a couple of things before. There's a there's a couple of trains of thought that I'm going to talk about. One we we already know is just regular Bible, but the other one is there are groups of people who are and these people consider themselves to be Christians as well and I do too. Um, but they are inclined to believe even by the spirit that the bible is is allegory it's all allegory it's 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 writings it's stories it's experiences are all pointing at something not historical but pointing at something one of the trains of thought the person believes that the bible is the unfold the unfolding of man the unfolding of man so from genesis to revelation is giving you a picture of man's unfoldment, kind of like. Um, and I'm just going to leave it right there for that point. So I was thinking about that point, and then I was thinking about, you know, how I 100% believe the Bible is pointing us to, um, uh, you know, the identity, accepting our identity as sons and daughters of God. Jesus was a representation of what we are when we come into agreement with that, you know what I mean? So he was, he, was, he was showing us who he is. You know, again, the Bible says that he was the firstborn. He was the first one of his kind. So if he was the firstborn, and again, we, I mean, we kind of talked about this, me and LaShondra in the live that we just did, but um, being the firstborn is you're the, you're the firstborn, and, there's, and there, so that means there's other ones that came after you. So, and that's in, that's in your Bible. So knowing that, and then knowing that the Bible also says that Jesus was tempted in all ways like all men. So if he was tempted like we are in every single thing that we go through on this earth, then he went through the same thing, right? So then one of that, one of what that means is, then Jesus had to have, um, his experience as a man had to be like our experiences as men and women. So meaning, you know, the Bible, the Bible says we need faith to please God. So that means Jesus needed faith. Jesus had to believe who he was. So whatever was telling him that he was the son of God, he had to actually believe that. So that is a, that is a real firm place for us to stand because a lot of us give we give too much credence to Jesus being the son of God or being God to the fact that we don't believe that he was showing us who we are. You know, when we believe and we accept Christ, we, we are conformed now to that image, right? So, but we don't believe that. We, we believe, oh, that's just for, for Jesus because he was God or he was the son of God. But the Bible clearly tells us and it paints us a picture that, no, he went through everything that we went through. And that we go through. So that means he had to believe. He had to have faith and walk out what um, the, the scriptures or what, you know, the people or the spirit was telling him he was. So I was thinking about this. The, I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about when he came out of the wilderness experience. And it says that he went to the synagogues. He grabbed the scrolls. 
He found the place where, where, um, where uh, 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 I believe it's, he found the place where, where he was in the scriptures per se, and he started to declare it and read it. And he says, hey, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I'm here. I'm standing before you now. So I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the other trains of thought. And I know the spirit of the Lord kind of really, really quickly dropped it, dropped it in my spirit. And it's like this. So, again, when we're talking about identity and we're getting to know and believe and be courageous to accept who we really are, if Jesus had to do the same thing and he went and he found um, a place where he was, per se, in the scriptures, because it doesn't, it doesn't say his name. It just says certain things. It just points to certain things because um, I believe there in the Old Testament, a lot of the, uh, the firstborn males, you know, their families were wondering if they were the Messiah, you know. And so it, it goes fast forward years, hundreds of years, hundreds of years. And here Jesus steps on the scene. So he had and he had to have and they had to have, even though Mary, you know, had the experience of, of child birth without a male. I don't, we don't, we're not told if she even told Jesus that experience. Maybe the spirit didn't have her to do that, or maybe it did, but he still had to believe it anyway. So when, when you kind of are clear on that truth and that understanding, and you are coming into agreement with who you really are, the spirit was like, that's our job. We come out of our we, we, we come out of our process into the truth, boldly and courageously believing that we are the sons and daughters of God. Jesus single-handedly um, changed the world. The, the other 11 disciples single-handedly changed the world when they were courageously operating in their identity. But the point is, you know, the point I'm trying to make here is that you are an example of that Jesus. You are an example of uh, a person courageously walking out their process, coming to a point with God where you are accepting of who you are and you can find yourself in Scripture. Because remember, there's no names, you know what I mean, as it was pointing to who the Messiah was going to really be. Now, we know we're not the Messiah, but what I'm saying is you have a unique responsibility to display God in a real and a rich way. You know, we talked about um, the simple truth of belief. Now, it, it, it's hard because... We have a lot of layers that need to be peeled back, you know, as we um, are in this world, we get conditioned a lot of different ways. But if we are for God and with God and we walk with God, then God points us in the direction that we're to go, ultimately leading us to who we really are. So you are literally the the son and the daughter, you are the remnant. You are that piece that is designed to literally change your world by accepting who you are. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. We are sons of God, both male and female, if we would just believe it and courageously walk towards that light. You know, the, the, the thing that I was uh, listening to, the person who was talking about how in the Old Testament, the, the few were doing exploits, man. I mean, they were, man, they were showing God like no other. And one, one of them, he was talking about how Elijah, um, you know, he's, he's challenging the officers or, or the, the whatever you want to call them of, of, the, of, of Baal. And he's like, hey, you know, we're going to do this. Let's go. Meaning he's like. You, gonna, you, you, you think Baal is God? You think you tougher than, than my God? You think you're stronger than my God? Let's do this. We don't do that now. We, we're so um, 
man, we're so afraid, we're so weak, we're so unaware. That's the word. We're so unaware of who we are that we don't operate in the, in the system of faith enough to display the power of God. You know, we, we want the thing to just come to us. We, we won't challenge the system and run, you know, saying, follow me and let's get up here. Let me see what you can do. And I'm going to show you what my God can do. We don't do that because we're afraid we're going to be wrong. We're afraid it's not going to work. And that's a strategy. That's a secret to your identity is being able to be courageous enough. And the Bible says, you know, those who, um, you know, who are not courageous will find themselves in the lake of fire. And I'm not, I'm not preaching hell in this second, but I'm telling you, there is a secret to courageousness that uncovers and reveals not only your, 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 your unique and authentic authority, but it reveals God in you so, so tough, man, that it can't be denied. But will we go? Will we go? Um, so that's, that's all I wanted to, to, to come in and drop on your heart. The God perspective is, uh, is, is really crucial for us to get this because this is, this is going to determine where we're going to go as the church where we want to, where we're going to go in the earth, how we're going to make God visible, God visible enough to change people's lives the way that it was always meant to be. You know what I mean? So that's all I got y'all. Pastor Jamal, Rising Ground Church. Peace. Bye.